it was fun being out. And then we both, like, at the same time looked at each other and knew it was time to leave. That was fun, too. <laughs> yo, okay, start the pod, man. We're potting and we're giving them too much because that is, yo, there's no better moment than when you and your girl look at each other and you guys are like, yeah, let's head out. It is time. And you know that, sh- yo, and, and you can walk out feet. And, and it feels great. No, it feels amazing. That's why being in a relationship is dope. Because you have, like, uh, you're not walking amazing. out by yourself. It's not a loss. The night's still good. <laughs> night's still great. Amazing. <laughs> There's Absolutely. still so much optimism for this night. I could have sex tonight. So much. <laughs> wow. That is a possibility. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, there was and a, that happens every time. <laughs> like, it's great. I love it here. <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that because, like, we were at the, at the spot for brunch, and there was another table, like, another section right across from us, and it was a bunch of, like, dusty-ass niggas, like, just a nigga brunch, like, mm. all dusty-ass, like, black Air Force One dudes. Oh. And uh, they weren't flea. They weren't flea niggas. I mean, they were flea, but were they rich they, niggas? I don't. They didn't look rich. They just looked like. I mean, there were no women there. So how rich were they? I don't. <laughs> there was not one. Does women make you rich? I mean, I don't. I don't think it makes you. They rich. weren't rich. They weren't rich in company. They weren't rich in company. I mean, I. I don't know. It's not a bunch. It's not well, a bunch of like this. If I was, if I was in a group chat with like. 18 other niggas, and all 18 niggas was like, yo, let's brunch. I'm just going to miss that brunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, yeah. you know, I'm just going to miss that brunch. It's all Unless y'all. it's like a big reunion, but most of the time. Of all dudes? Nah, we don't even do that. A big reunion of all dudes? 18 people? Not, not 18, 10. But see, a that, 10 speed. See, I feel like there's a number, there's a cap where it should be like, this is the amount of dudes. And now we got to start like thinking about having some women present. <laughs> hey, someone break this up a little. Someone, okay. someone right, like right. get a little diverse. Let's get some diversity yeah, in the room. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? So like, what's that cap at? I think that cap is like at eight. You can have eight dudes and it just be eight dudes. Eight to ten, no more than ten. And I'm cool. Eight to, eight because to ten, because like, you can run fives. I'm with my niggas, so I run fives. Okay, cool. Exactly. Cool. Eight to ten. Indeed. Okay. When you start getting to 11 or 12, it's like, mm. No, no, no. It's way too much cock here. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's a lot. So much meat. Mix so many, yeah. so much meat mixing. Yeah. So- <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the King's Speech Podcast with Trevor and Josh, the podcast you can relate to, learn from, laugh at, from two guys who realize the streets and the club only look fun on television right now. What's good, Josh? How are you? I'm good. I feel conflicted every time you say that. I'm challenged. Challenged. What is? What is? What? Is, what are your conflicting emotions? Streets was fun. <laughs> and but I'm how, in the streets. I mean, how, I'm in the streets fun. with my lady. I'm in the streets with my lady. So it's just, it's, 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 it's fun now. We were just talking about it. It's, it's a different uh-huh. approach now to the streets. You know what I'm saying? But you know, is, is it considered being in the streets if you're in the streets with your lady, or is it just like considered? Is it not the same street? I'm in the streets. I mean, it's the same streets, but it ain't the same it's, streets. It's, it's a different. It's a different, like I guess, approach. Uh, to be. I in mean, hundred percent. Yes, it's a different approach. It's a different mm-hmm. approach. Um, but what's up, man? How are you? I just want to let everybody know I'm wearing my uh, Laker down. We the champs. You know what I'm saying? So just in case you guys were confused and who the world champions were for the NBA mm-hmm. season last year, that was the Lakers. And if you were confused about the season. For baseball, that's the Dodgers. Hats backwards, though, because I have a long hair. All right, that's all I have for you today. What's up, bro? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I, every. I mean, all weekend I was just waiting to see what is he wearing. What is he gonna wear? <laughs> yeah, Who you is didn't he know, gonna right? wear? <laughs> Who are you wearing? <laughs> well, today I'm wearing Nike, a new era. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got the old school slam cover. D Wade. Okay. Uh, who are you the, wearing today, after Trevor? Tell us who you wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you got to give your little brother his T-shirt back, though. Fat. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is honestly, my T-shirt. It fits. I went. I went up in size during quarantine. I went to an extra large mm-hmm. for comfort purposes. <laughs> um, in, 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 in certain T-shirts, but I do appreciate that fit more. Yeah, it's a good fit. It's a good fit. It's a good fit. Um, but that snug look is also a good look. You know, at times too. So I might have to snug up a little bit. I mean, you know, it's, it's my thing. It's your thing. It's my thing. It's Indeed. your thing. And plus, you look like, good. 
Thank you, thank you. And I've been lifting a lot, working out a lot. So you know, some of my shirts that like it fluctuates, like depending on like how I'm lifting or how I'm eating. It you know differentiates about how it fits, whether it's a medium or a large or a medium. You have um, you, you actually yeah. You're one of the I'm I'm gonna put you out there. Sorry, you're one of those friends that I have that are bigger than me. Pause. Right. And you buy mediums, and I'm, and I'm sometimes confused because I always buy larges. And th there's a couple of y'all, you know what I mean, that I'm confused. <laughs> that I'm just like, yo, but I'm a large at all times, and you are bigger than me at all times, and you're a medium sometimes. Well, I started buying more larges. I've started buying more larges because, okay, like welcome, you said, welcome to the club. Like, like comfort, comfort also, right? And uh, yeah. this one always a medium, like, it, and it it feel like it feels like it fits fine. It's been washed and it's been dried and it's. Same size it was when I bought it. That's impressive for washing good. it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Absolutely. Indeed. It's a good, it's a good t-shirt. You guys can slam online.com. Oh, wow, uh, plug them, please. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, they sent us a fat check. Anyway, yeah. uh, how was your weekend? My weekend was good. I didn't even tell man. you how my weekend was. I didn't even say that. Yeah, we were just talking yeah, about bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was yeah, outside. I went to a birthday party. It was dope. It was fun. Um, you were in the streets. I was in the streets, in in the in the streets, very um, and it was fun. In the streets this weekend, it was a good time. It was cold as shit, but it was fun. <laughs> Can't relate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure you're waiting to get that off. Uh huh. <laughs> Yo, you saw how excited I was that I got so that excited. off. So excited. That's Absolutely. like that's why you moved to Florida. Honestly, I see. So you, I feel get you on that, that. so you can get that off, man. Yeah, but it was it was, it was very cold. It was very cold this morning uh, when I went out to train, and I'm sure it's gonna be cold when I go and get go out again tonight. But great weekend though. Good. Yeah. With the Love setting it. up. Wifey's uh, back. Wifey's back. Back in business, indeed. We're back in um, back in action. And no more we're grumpy Trev. To, I'm still very grumpy. <laughs> Ask her. I'm still very grumpy. Um, <laughs> that I'm, a, I'm, just a grump, I'm just a grumpy guy. Just less grumpy. That you're yeah, significantly less significantly yeah, yeah, less grumpy. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty I'm much. I'm just me. a grumpy guy though. You yeah. know that. Like I just yeah. I don't like I don't like things or people. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was scared to ask you if you want to interview people <laughs> next season. I was just like, hey, I just want to ask Trev if he wants to talk to people. Yeah, I do, I do, I do, I do. I want to talk to people. I like, I, you know what I mean when I say I don't like people. No, 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 no. It's it's so funny yeah, because yeah, I was yeah. I was texting Kim yesterday, and I texted her like an invisible ink, and I'm like, no one knows the real me. And I was like, I was, I was like, but you, and, I, and then like right after that, I was like, I don't like people. <laughs> It was just, it was just one of true. those things, man. It's, it's true. No, I love true. people, but I love also to be home away from them. Oh, that's the best. I love yo. people from far. <laughs> <laughs> I yo, love you ten miles far. away. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we're lining up to go uh, on a little vacay. Just a little vacay. Yeah, I wanted to ask you how that works logistically. Actually, what do you mean? Cause you're going to like, cause your governor, your governor is so weird. He has his rules are so inconsistent. So do you have to take a test to go to Costa Rica? To go, no. Okay, but to I come am. back. But I'm. That's fine. But I am. Yeah, that's. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I'm not okay. I live in Florida. No well, I, it's based on the country. Really, it's not. Yeah. It's not really based on like. Um, I guess when you leave, when you leave the state, it's based on the country you're um, you're Go traveling to. to. So, so on the way back, you need to take a COVID test in Costa Rica. No, I'm gonna take one when I come back. When I, I'm not taking any tests in Costa Rica. I'm not oh, I thought letting they, anybody I, do anything to me medically in Costa Rica. So is it just <laughs> for flights? <laughs> yeah, yeah, facts. Don't do that. <laughs> Won't ever see you again. <laughs> Missing arms. Um, yeah. So is it just for people who come back from Florida that they have the military there waiting? Because you're going to Costa Rica and it seems like that's going to be perfectly fine. Come in, take a test. But apparently anyone who, like, goes to Florida and comes back to New York, there's, like, armed forces, like, waiting for your COVID test. Well, that's for anybody that comes off a plane. I think they uh, well, not, not, they don't wait for the COVID test because for contact tracing. So they want to take your information, take your name, your phone number, your address. Uh, when my girl came back from Atlanta for Thanksgiving, when she got off the plane in the airport, there were the, the, the you know, the weekend warriors, the Army Reserve niggas there. And they were just taking information. <laughs> That's who they are. <laughs> it was the same dudes that was at the COVID testing site when we, uh, when we were there earlier in uh, earlier this year. The ROTC niggas. Yeah, R T J R O T C. Pat leather shoes. Yo, shout out to everyone who serves, man. Shout out to everyone who serves 
<laughs> Comedy style. I'm glad you said that. I was about to clown some RTC niggas. Yeah, yeah, anyway. you got to chill. Um, I know a couple of them. It was, uh, it was, yeah. They were at the ROTC niggas were at the airport. And they... <laughs> Yo, ROTC niggas are the funniest group of niggas on any college campus. It's just hands down oh. the funniest. Like it's just they're just I, I love them. I didn't. I don't I didn't even know what they on, be doing though. They be I didn't have them on my up. campus. Oh, they were in my high school. They were. Oh, they were, they were all up at my high school. On. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they be doing, but they be they look serious though. Them niggas be marching. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> They're like a boring fraternity. That's it. it. It's like a, it's, an, it's an amazing blend of armed services, frater, frater, fraternity, like you said, yeah. like fitness classes. Like I just, it's just an amazing blend. Oh, and weekend warriors. That's the they're, greatest um, thing I've ever heard. They only they're, work on the weekends. <laughs> They're frat boys that don't get pussy. That's what ROTC is. <laughs> no, because they have girls in there. Okay, we got to stop. <laughs> yeah. Why are you? Yeah. Yo, let me ask you a question. Which ROTC uh -huh. are you thinking of right now? Because you a bully. Oh, my God. Yo, so there was this kid. <laughs> there was this kid in my high school. I'm not going to say his name because I think he follows me on yeah, social people, media. Pe yeah, people watch this, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. Trust me, I know. I hear that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was really tall. He was taller than me. He was big. But this nigga had a big ass head. It was like a potato head. It was so big and he was so yellow and light skinned. Oh, and he oh, was just, and he had and he had the he had these big ass feet. And then in the sneakers, his feet weren't that big. But then we put on those like, you know, you know, I'm gonna go stomp out some Vietnamese in a jungle boots yeah. on. Yeah, them, them brown joints, them, them brown just joints. looked crazy. It looked like he was carrying buildings on his feet. It's just lugs, just lugs, just big old and lugs. And he just walked weird. It's like he was young, so he wasn't like weird. used to they his walk. size. I think it's the boots. I think it's the boots. It's the boots, and it was also like fucking puberty. Like he's it's never, I've never been this big before in my life. This is hard to, this is hard to handle. See, that's <laughs> another thing too. Like I, I'm glad I'm an average 5'9", dude, because like there was never a point in time where I was too big and I was too surprised of what was going on. Like, <laughs> I can't imagine what it's like to be like 5'4 one day and then it's like, oh, growth spurt. I'm six foot. Like I don't know what to do. Like I clothes went, don't fit. Like <laughs> I went through a growth spurt my junior year of high school. I went from I think like five six and a half to six feet in one summer. That's a spurt. That's the that's that the type was, shit I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, what do you do? Yeah, mom had a mom was mad. I mom was clothes. tight. Super we tight. We just we just went to cookies. <laughs> 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 oh, you was the private school. I know you had the cookies. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Jamaica Avenue, man. There's nothing oh, like hitting Jamaica man. Avenue on a on a on a cool on a on a, on a hot August <laughs> weekend with moms and you hitting cookie, VIM. Conway. Conway, <laughs> nigga. Come on. Y'all wasn't from the... Listen, when people say they got uh, it from the mud, like, if you didn't go to Conway, oh you didn't get it from goodness. the mud. Because that's where I got That's where it. all like, my underwear came from. All my drawers. All my Every single piece. All my socks. Y'all had name brand socks? I j like, when you see me wearing Nike tube socks, out <laughs> with, like, that's short shorts... That's a new thing. That's a recent thing. It's because I'm experiencing <laughs> privilege. <laughs> like, I'm just like, wow. Y'all niggas have Nike socks. I think I rebelled because, like, all my socks were white and then... Like, as I got older and I guess I was able to buy, you know, clothes for myself and make decisions about what I was going to wear, I just started wearing all black socks. Like, all my socks okay, were black. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All black socks. Like, no matter where I was going. And now my how socks, work. my socks got the pattern, so I do the pattern socks. So, I like... Yeah, you're a pattern socks. I fuck with that. That's yeah. your drip. Yeah, I love my socks. It, love my it's socks. Like, it's like you just love church. Just <laughs> wear church socks all the time. They're not like the thin church. You know the church socks you can see your feet in, like the, like Those the are transparent the ones? And you would see like the, the the fat lady with the thick thighs and the thick ankles. And you could see like <laughs> her, uh, her dry, her dry ankle bone, like do that sock. Ugh. Or do that stocking. Yes, yes. The little, the little, the little thinning of the thread. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause that cause that ashy foot is so dry, it's actually like cutting through the sock. Yeah. It's oh. it's weird, it's sick. How was your weekend? My weekend was really, really good, but I wanted to tell you something that you just made me think of just uh -huh. now, because I think this is hilarious. So, in the spirit of shopping at Cookies and VIM and Conway, do you remember when you had like your, like your own money and you can buy your own fits? Absolutely. I want to tell you about the first fit that I bought um, <laughs> when I had my own bread, and I want to tell you how 
terrible this fucking fit was. Oh, I'm sure mine. I'm not. I'm pretty okay. sure mine was worse. So I popped into the city. I got off the Long Island Railroad. You know what it is. If, you, if you're from Long Island or, or deep in Queens, you get on the Long Island Railroad, you take it to Penn Station. Mm-hmm. I get out of Penn Station. I cross the street, and there's H&M. The big H&M on the corner. Okay. So I slide in, and I'm like, yo, like, I think I realized in that moment, I, I wasn't going with the intentions of shopping. I just realized that I had money. And it, and, needs to be, f- and it needs to be gone now. I don't want it on me. No, I don't money want it on me. me. <laughs> money get away from, from me. me. <laughs> and also, <laughs> just leave quickly. Mm-hmm. And let's like, and but like for the first time, yo, buy what you want to buy. So yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. So I walk into H and M. You know, H and M got the colors. So I had jeans on already. So there's nothing else to change. I just needed to get a top and a bottom. I mean, a top, maybe a jacket. Right? Okay. Okay. So I find like this powder baby blue Hawaiian shirt. I picked it up, okay? Then I found a matching powder, not uh, not navy, just powder blue. No navy in there, sorry. So just a powder blue Hawaiian shirt. Then I found a powder blue track jacket. Oh, my God. And then I found, like, these shiny aviators. And I'm like, yo, this is some good shit. And I'm looking at the price tags, and I'm like, this is even better. Yeah, I walked out of there looking like I used to sing for B2K. It was bad. It was really, really just all baby like, blue, uh, just one blue. You look like and, Maya in the Best of Me video. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was. I was just thinking about that and like, wow, how we've grown and how we've changed. Um, one of the um, the first pieces of clothing I bought on my own. I was uh, working. No, I was taking like this class, like this college credit class at Hunter College when I was in high school, and you get a stipend. Um, for the summer, for taking the class. Okay, give me that. And I went to Macy's on 34th Street. <sighs> Big trip. And I went to the uh, the Hook Booger floor. Oh, yeah, um, you know they got the floor. There. Academics. My mom, hated, my mom hated that floor. <laughs> Academics, Rock South Aware, Pole, Rock Sean Aware, John. Sean, Sean. My mom never, ever. <laughs> so I got, a, uh, I got a Sean John hoodie, and it said, like, Sean Valor? John. No, it wasn't Valor. Okay. Like, it was, and the hoodie was probably $200. <laughs> Sean John hoodie, <laughs> big flex, right across. <laughs> Sean, right across the, right across the chest, and Black, it what was, color? What color? So the sleeves were white, and oh. then like the the body itself was like gray and baby blue. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and and just to remind everybody, I'm riding the like the dingy ass New York subway every day to go into the city. So after about a week, the sleeves are black. <laughs> so I'm sitting on the subway every day. <laughs> and Yo, they were white. As a kid, as a young kid, looking at the bottom of your of your white shirt sometimes. Oh my goodness. It made you just look inward like, "Yo, you're a filthy motherfucker." That's like, what happened why? the first time like I wore the first time I started doing my own laundry and I would wear like white collar shirts and you would see like the dirt stain Yo. on the collar. I was like, yo, I'm a nasty nigga. I'm like, I scrubbed the shit out of my neck. <laughs> I was like, my neck and my every butt. Day, every day since. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this yeah. is nasty, Trevor. Who the yeah. fuck are you? It's you are raised better than this. There's no, there's no need, man. This is nah. good. Nah, not at all. Um, overall, to answer your question, my weekend was good. I awesome. um, had a good time. Um... My godson's father was in town, so we got to kick it last night, which was really cool. Just spend it outside and just catch up. Um, awesome. And kicked it with Kim. We attempted to uh, She did the tree. Mm, yes, I saw that. So, I saw the, the, yeah, the so, story. So, the story sh- bright, brightening and the lights and stuff like that. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, it's apparently like it's like a, a tree reveal. Okay, that's the thing. <laughs> Okay, it's like you know how like like girls love reveals. So like the gender reveal, <laughs> I think guys, I think guys like the gender reveal way more than girls. They're like, it. oh, girl. I hate, I hate him. I'm, I'm, I don't. Kim said no, so it's no. You know what my gender reveal is gonna be? Yo, dog, I'm having a boy. That's right. Group text. Do you have a home phone? No, absolutely no. Absolutely. I thought that was a, I thought that was your home phone ringing. <laughs> no, 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 because my uh like my uh phone hit the computer key by. Uh, I was like, yo, home phone. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> outdated. <laughs> um, um, yeah, no gender reveals for me ever. No gender reveals, but tree reveals no. is right now. This is the season for tree reveals. Like you said, um, we just love revealing things. Yeah. <laughs> some <laughs> some women on Instagram like revealing more things than others. <laughs> I, I don't I don't I don't know. Everything is it. Everything's a reveal. Ooh, look at my nails. Got my nails done. <laughs> <laughs> Look at but my nails. You have to start in. You have to start in. <laughs> you start and then in. Bring it like, out, and then bring it out. 
I'll be watching. Yeah. Ooh, good shit. Yeah. 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 Let us sparkle. Yeah. Sparkle. Sparkle, sparkle. Um, My pinky nail's t- a different color. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this artwork. Pinky nail's a different color. Yo, um, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you, would you paint your nails? Absolutely not. Yeah, you're a man's man. No, would you? Uh, no, I, but I, I get I get the color on my toes. Clear, on my toes sometimes. All right, let's talk about these topics. Let's talk about these topics. Do you want to kick off topics, or do you want me to kick off topics? Um, I'll kick off this week. You kicked it off last week. Okay. First thing, of course, that caught my eye, caught everybody's eye. Funk Flex got liposuction. Funk Master Flex. New York Hot 97 DJ since the beginning of time, it seems like. New York City. This is what New York sounds like. That, um, that dropping he, bombs on records um, consistently for the past 25 to 30 years. Actually, I, he got in front of this. Because I guess if anybody else found out he got lipo, liposuction, they'd be clowning him. But I kind of feel like it died down really quickly because he's the one that revealed it himself. He clowned himself. Brilliant. It's a brilliant I think, move. I, I think that's a. I think that's a brilliant move. If that's what I had, mm-hmm. like a different take on this, actually, and more so, like I, I didn't really see. I, I think we clowned him because he's, he's. I clowned him because he did it like an Instagram thought. That's why he did do him. it like an Instagram Instagram like, thought. Yes. Like, so like for like lipo, neither here or there, bro. Funk Flex has lost a lot of weight in the last couple of years, mm-hmm. and like I know like that sometimes getting that extra cheese off is. Get you know what I mean? If you have the bread, get the cheese off. Whatever, cool. But like, I don't know if he was clowning himself. I just like, I think he just went out like a thought. Like he got he was trying to give his promo code for for lipo. I think he, he's his discount code for his doctor. Yeah, I think it was a discount surgeon. code. Like he, like that's where you're getting clown. Like get lipo if you want to get lipo, keep it low. I mean, I think he, he knew people would find out, so he got out in front of it. Listen, like. Funk Flex getting lipo is weird because like he's this big guy, he's this big dog, big dog pit bull. I'm in the tunnel, Urgh, yeah, going yeah. at rappers, like growling on growling on radio and and being the tough guy that he's like you know presenting himself to be. So it's it's a little it's a little weird. Like you said, he's out there moving like an Instagram thought. Like who yeah, wearing like do we know if he got the fans tra- the fat transferred somewhere else? Like no, he's gonna come out here bucket. with some. <laughs> With some hips, like funk, funk flex with some hips. Where'd that fat go? I want to know. I don't know. I want to know. But yeah, you're right. He's done a lot. Him and that was disgusting. That shit was nasty. But that he's done a lot of work to I, lose I weight though. Throw up. Yeah, he did. He did. Salute. Shout out to everybody on that fitness flex. journey, man. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's good for the soul. It is good for the soul. But uh, I mean, how do you feel about lipo? Like, how do you feel about people getting? Getting liposuction or even like the, um, I guess like the stomach stapling surgery, the gastric bypass, stuff like that. Because I watch a lot of my 600 pound life. I watch a lot of it in my lifetime. And that's what it all is. It's like everybody getting like the gastric bypass and their journey from being 700 pounds to being 150, shit like that. Um, Here's what I would say. Honest, honest opinion. If you want to change or alter anything on your body, be my guest. Go crazy. Right. Um, however you get it, you get it. Lipo, staples, take it off, amputate it, whatever. I don't care. Right. But it does feel a lot better when you can accomplish it yourself. And that's just my stance. So like whatever fitness goal or whatever dream body you're looking to get, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a greater feeling to me personally when you're mm-hmm. the hands or you put the effort into molding this body into what you want it to be. And I'm speaking from experience. Yeah. But I wasn't like 600, so I don't know. Yeah, I think Two, sometimes people reach like a, I guess like a place where even in Funk Flex's situation, he felt like there was those, those hard to reach spots that he just had to like, you know, have somebody suck out. Those, that jar looked full of more than just a couple of hard to exactly, reach spots. Exactly, right? He <laughs> transferred that shit Funk somewhere. was like, take it all away. He's just let it go. Funk Flex out here with some Bernice hips. We're going to see it. We're going to see it. We gonna see it. We see you flex. You know, you know what's coming next, right after this, though. Waist trainers, men. Waist tra- come on, come on. Safari's already on the waist trainers. You know, Funk Flex gonna have a a flex a flex a flex waist trainer. I'm disgusted by the thought. I just think people just need to realize that there are things that are going to keep you in shape: moderation, self control, and consistency. 
that's it. Hey, also, another thing to that point is if you want to go ahead and get the surgery, cool. All right? Just remember that you got yourself to the pool. At some point, you and yourself got to a point where you didn't want to be. So don't let history repeat itself. Right? So you want to get, like, you know what I'm saying? You see shorties, you get the surgery, you move the fat from here and you put it over there. Don't get the fat back over there, though. That, move, that fat moves back so fast. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, I don't like, live here. Was, that was cool for, <laughs> for, for, for two months, for the summer. That's not but, my neighborhood. But now you're drinking Coquito again. And, well, things are, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just don't, you know? She got, she got the fat sucked out of her gut and then put it in her butt. And then it was in her butt and it was like, it's cold here. <laughs> so then they moved back to the gut. Just, oh, the guts just, got the guts got cheaper rent. Yeah, it's just, it's just it's just picking the best spots, man. It's picking the best. Oh, spot. it's picking this the butt best real estate spot. ain't hitting like that gut real estate. So they yeah. move back. Guts warmer. I'm in, I'm in the gut. Guts. Um, <laughs> I'm in the gut. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Shout to those who get the lipo. I guess. If Indeed. you could get surgery on one part of your body, what would it be, Trev? Would it be your That's nose? Good. Would it be That's your question? Uh, what would it be? Uh, I get bigger calves. That's what's up. Yeah, what's up? Well, what about you? Um, if I was, if, if this is, I thought it was gonna be cool and be like nothing, right? <laughs> and but no, then I wanted hit. to say nothing. I wanted to say nothing. I but wanted I figured, to say nothing. I figured, I, like, I'd be, I figured I'd be vulnerable. I'd be vulnerable. I was like, bitch, you lying. I was like, okay, hold on. So basically, I think I would go with, I would want to to just keep my stomach, um, always flat. That's not an answer. <laughs> I would want no, to stay. What no, do you the, mean, like the, the, no, the, the etching? The, the surgery, you get the etching? Like, yeah, the, the sculpting, the sculpting to keep your stomach like you know, some, flat, flat, flat. You got to be careful like that because like some of the girls get it and it looks like they have grill lines on their stomach. See, like, that's the thing like though. I, I would do it, but, a, but don't take my belly button barbecue. away. <laughs> <laughs> like why your stomach like, like you're <laughs> a steak. <laughs> yeah, who left you on Who left you on the grill? Sis? Who left the steak? On, hey, who left the steak on the grill? <laughs> Yeah, I, I I would want I would want I would oh, want boy. the shaky stuff. I wouldn't want the shaky stuff. Copy that. Um, okay. Yeah. For you but that's that. about it. Indeed. Um, but I, I didn't do have it. A, no, I, absolutely never, never in life. Um, second thing I had, I didn't have a lot today. Um, have you ever? Because you were on the brown last night, huh? Yes, I was. I How you feeling like right now? How's your stomach feeling? My stomach feels fine. I feel Head. fine. I just feel groggy. Let's let's do let's do a, a adult. Self care uh, uh, checklist, real quick. After okay. a night on the brown, how is you? Pause. Right, just one night. Pause. 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 pause, 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 pause. Goddamn. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was gonna ask my next question, my next follow up, for how are your insides, but I'll kind of. <laughs> I'll ask that in a better way. Um, did the Hennessy make your stomach uh, queasy this morning? No, I, I had no nauseous. No Good. nausea. No nausea. Like okay. That. No. Um, headache. No headache. Dehydration? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Drink a ton of water today. Okay, good, good, good. And um, just overall mental cloudiness. How do you feel? I'm good. I just feel tired. I just feel like lethargic. I feel like I'm dragging my body around. That's how I feel. That's not. That's the night on the brown, folks. That's the night on the brown. What was your uh, What was your next topic? So the other topic I had was more so a question. It was just thinking of something that you know pops into my head. Have you ever like regretted? Bringing a woman around your family and your friends? Can't say I have. Um, I, I can't say I have <clears throat> because growing up, mm -hmm. like meeting my parents wasn't like it was like it was a big deal to them, or maybe it might. I don't know. But to me, mm -hmm. I wasn't really trying to bring male or female anybody around my parents that was gonna like that could have my parents be like, I don't want you hanging out with this person. Like, one wrong thing said, and I was always afraid my parents would be like, well, this person's not a good person to be around. You know what I mean? Like, I just, so I was always mm -hmm. afraid of bringing people around my parents because I just didn't want, like, you know what I mean? Like, you to be, you know your friends come around and say some stupid ass shit? And you're just like, Happens. dog, dog, now my parents think you are a bad influence on my life, and now our friendship's going to have to be terminated. So I just always been that type of person, so I just applied that to with women. I was like, yo, I'm not going to bring no type of chick around unless, like, I really think that she's going to be here for a value, a value. So, safe. What about you, Trevor? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, 
you know, like it's it's it is for me. It is a big deal, and uh, I haven't just brought just anybody, just any old person. Like I bring people that I care about, that I, you know, that I think that there's a future with, and for sure, uh, potential, 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 absolutely. But in hindsight, it's like, eh, probably not that one or that other one. Uh, yeah. Have you, have your parents ever given you feedback like, yo, fam, what are you doing? <laughs> have after, they ever just have after. they ever just looked at you like yo what's 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 going on with you? Let's talk. Um afterwards, not during. <laughs> so like after something may have ended, they were like, Oh man, you dodged a bullet. Some, like not in okay. those words. Okay, oh, oh you mean after that person like, is is completely out the picture. Yeah, excommunicado. Oh, absolutely. After, after yeah, the yeah, feedback yeah, yeah. afterwards is always jokes. It's always yeah, like yeah, the, the post game show <laughs> is always hilarious. My, my dad's post game show is the worst too, because I'm just like Bro, stop with these jokes. <laughs> stop. These jokes aren't funny. This is not funny. <laughs> could have been you. He loves could have been you's. My dad loves could have been you's. That is hilarious. Shout out to him, though, because... That is really funny. Oh, uh, could have been you. Oh, yeah. look at it. She put on 40 pounds. <laughs> could have been you. <laughs> My dad ain't shit for that, Loki. That is funny. He gets a kick out of the could have beens. Oh, man. I like that. Um, I like that a lot. All right. Yeah. So, what are your topics? That's all. I, that's all I got. Uh, got in the tank. Okay. So, I mean, we've been hearing about it all, all month. The chatty house, the clubhouse, the new, the new social media craze. But it's exclusive, man. It's invite only. You're only in on the in crowd. If if someone who's in invited you, you know what I'm saying. So, mm -hmm. I got my first invite this weekend. And shout out to Matt. Um, Matt gave me. Uh, he hit me. Over, he had me yesterday. He's like, yo, fam, I got something for you. Are you on Club? I was like, nah. He's like, you got to be on it. He's like, it's like podcasting meets Twitter. And I was okay. like, okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, I kind of, like, did the whole setup. I have not entered no, uh, actually, no, I, I said, I'll tell you the full story. I did, no, I, so I did the entire setup. I fused my, my, my friends with my this and my that. Uh -huh. um, whatever. So then um, <laughs> I sat there and I thought about it for a second and I'm like, I don't tweet. Okay. I don't. I don't tweet at all. I haven't tweeted in a very long time. Um, in social media, I'm only I don't go on Facebook. I'm only attached to Instagram because I feel like that's a really good way for me to just stay connected with everyone. It's just, mm -hmm. a, it's just a very common place for me to stay connected and just kind of engage like deeper, like Pictures, moments, memories, life, right? So I like that. And then I was like, ah, do I want to get into a room where I just hear people talk? And I personally don't. Okay. So I was like, ah, that's where I end. Because I, I walked into this room and it was like Shad Moss. And he was like talking about like when he first got on in the rap game. And I was like, ah, not right now. You don't want to hear the little Bow Wow origin nope. story? No. Nope. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, it's valid. Uh, I mean, I've heard a lot about it. Uh, one of my homegirls hit me up and asked me like if I wanted to do it. Also, um, I don't. I don't. I'm, I mean, you know, I, I tweet uh, most of the stuff. I tweet though was like promo stuff for us, and then right um, Instagram, same thing. Um, but I feel like it's just a lot, right? Like you got to give a lot of time, a lot of energy to it. Um, like, it feels like something if you go down the rabbit hole and you could get lost pretty quickly. Like, you could lose time in Clubhouse, listening and talking and responding. Um, and then it's like, are the conversations value added? You know, are if, they, if, though? If, if, if there's a room where somebody is specifically, like, you know, teaching you something or telling you an experience about somebody that you look up to, then that's dope. If it's Shad Moss talking about his... His rise in the rap game. I mean, that's pretty interesting, maybe, but probably not something that will like pique the interest of um, of everyone. Maybe just like people in his in his demo in his demo, which would be the clubhouse demo. So he's you know shooting his shots at the right audience. I, here's what I, another thing I would say. Right mm -hmm. in the spirit of being mixy, it just doesn't suit well with my current lifestyle. Mm. Right. So like that's another that's just like another thing for me like. And I've also been learning a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. And like hearing just any type of conversation makes my ear bleed. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't really hear just anything. Um, 
I think as far as I think as far as like the mixy thing, I mean, we make I mean, you make things what they are. Like if I feel like if I did something like that, because even so, anything can be mixy. Like Instagram can yeah. be mixy. Facebook, Twitter, anything you make mixy is going to be mixy. Is not right. necessarily of course, of course, the of the platform. It's the people. So, um, and if somebody tries to get, listen, like I'm 35 years old, right? So, uh, older I, now. I haven't, I haven't had the desire to to be me to me social media mixy in a, in a while. And that's 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 what it, that's what I'm saying. Like I just don't have a social media mixy appetite anymore. I want to come home, mm-hmm. and I just want to be in my crib and just chill. Like I like again, Instagram. Yes, is, my, is is the mixiest I can go. But that's the extent of my like. I know myself right now. The appetite that I have is for that. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. That's just where I'm at in the current stage that I am in my life. You know what I'm saying? But like, I think it's a dope platform. I think to yeah. your point, like you're saying, if there's somebody who I look up to or somebody I resonate with that I can mm-hmm. um, gain knowledge from, I think it's great to have that platform. And maybe I'll keep it for that avenue. But the everyday, yeah. just to jump on Clubhouse, just to jump into a conversation on a topic of something, I don't. I'm not. I'm, I don't have that right now. <laughs> the two hundred dollars conversation. And also, everyone's opinion isn't like what I want to hear. Respect. I mean, but that's you know, and, and and sometimes we do need to hear opinions that are different from us. Sometimes no, we, we do, do to hear but like not a, everyone's. A, a and, different. And, and, like no, 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 not everyone's opinion, opinion is valuable. A lot of people aren't smart. But I feel like even like for <laughs> what we do, <laughs> I feel like for what we do here, though, it's 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 good to at least like tap in a little bit just to. You know, like see what the pulse is and see what people are talking about and thinking about and how we could address it and um, how we could deal with it and make sure that, you know, we're on the right side of being current uh, right. and, and just being relevant. So, I'm going to I'm gonna, I am, I'm gonna tell you right now, uh-huh. I am not going to keep up with the times. I am getting washed. I'm letting I mean, you know it's, right it's, now. It's, it's about keeping up. To a certain extent, right? Like keeping up with like stuff that you like culturally. Instagram. That's what I do. I don't keep up with everything. <laughs> I don't. Like it's it's, I can't. it's impossible to. You can't live life and keep up with everything and everybody. So, um, you know, I think it's good for what it is. Uh, I'm, I'm interesting to see what it develops and turns into. But I think it's value added if the people in it or the people that, or your rooms that you're in, is, you know, teaching you something. For sure. For sure. Listen, mm-hmm. and to each their own. Like this is just me speaking about where I'm at in my life. Like. They're like, I think it's a dope platform, and I think mm-hmm. it's one for people to explore and see if it's for them. A thousand percent. I'm just saying, for me and myself right now, I got a wedding to plan, dog. You know what I mean, I can't be in the chat house. I gotta go. I gotta go hit the trap. You know what I mean? Like that's just where my mind's at. Not I the trap. You. Actually, I'm not a trapper. I'm actually a very honest young man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the second thing I had um, that I wanted to talk to about was I finally read The Alchemist. Okay. Um, and I've had this book in my possession for about four years. And I hit my boy Hakeem up, um, and we were talking, because I was just so excited that I read a book, finished a book. Um, and which I, like, something that I don't necessarily challenge myself to more. And I know you're a big reader, um, so I want to challenge myself to more reading. But I hit my boy Hakeem up, and he said something so dope. He said, um, books find you when they need it. Like he's like, that's the type of book that finds you when it's time when when it's when it's time for you to read it. Mm-hmm. So I think it's cool that I've had it in my possession for like four years and it found me at this current juncture. Um, but it's such a great book, just about the overall aspect of life and chasing your dreams. And I think yeah. that my my encouragement would be to anyone like on a journey to chase their dreams, just read that book. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to preach on it. Like, but like, if you're really searching after like something in this life, read The Alchemist. Um, Cause that's what I have. What you got, Trev? Yeah, it's very value added uh, for me. I read it at a time where I was pretty stable, pretty stationary, but it was still very, um, very inspiring mm. um, to go on a journey. You don't know where you're going to end up. But you're on Yo, that journey. Like it's so through, amazing. You're going through different things, meeting different people, different experiences. I mean, honestly, you probably inspired me to try to like you know read through it again real quick. I th- um, Yo, low key, real. It's a quick read. Week. I did it in so, a day. Um, but yeah, like, you know what I'm saying. I did it, and, and, and like I would say, I would actually encourage you to do that because you're on. We're, we're on. We're literally 
currently in this moment on this journey right now as we podcast. And yeah. like, it really like speaks to just like everything does happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. and, and it happens does in also, its own timing. And it happens on its own timing. Indeed. And the most important thing was chasing that gut feeling. Yeah. And like yeah. you're doing that, like we're doing that now with this pod, like we're chasing a gut feeling. Like, you know what I mean? So I think it's dope. Yeah. I think it's really dope to just apply to life. Um, that's what I have. It was great. I mean, I know another book uh, that's kind of similar, The Four Agreements. Four Agreements. That's a book that I really enjoy and I've read multiple, multiple times. Yeah. Um, like, I feel like books like that, they are so old, but they just like have so much relevant meaning in modern times. It's it's almost it's almost creepy, like yeah. the, the yeah, foresight man. that the authors and um, you know, the literature scholars and people of that time would say, like, I'm gonna write something that's gonna like be relevant for timeless. It's timeless, bro. It's, it's timeless. timeless. I don't yeah. know what century Buddy was in, but he was going to Bro, don't, come on, man. It was so yeah. good. So good. Um, Speaking and, and of finishing things, did you finish The Undoing? I did finish The Undoing. Uh, we're hitting that, we can hit that right now. We can hit that real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so, so what did you think of the, uh, what did you think of, of the ending of the final episode? Um, I was really shocked at Nicole Kidman on the, on the stand. Hmm. Um, and at first, I was so shocked that Nicole came in on the stand that I thought she wasn't aware of what the fuck she was doing. I thought oh, she no, was, she had that shit planned. That's and that, yeah. So a formula. Yeah, that was amazing to me because I'm watching this and I'm like, yo, 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 this is not the plan because this entire time I'm thinking, and I really want to blame the Joe Budden podcast for this <laughs> because it made me speculate on everyone, but like it just made me ignore the dad. No, you couldn't ignore the dad. Because Brother, in I episode didn't. six, I, he was ignored. I'm like, who could it be? When, it, when, mm -hmm. the nigga, when the nigga said, what if it was the son? I looked at Kim, and Kim was looking at me like, okay, this is the funniest part about the undoing. Kim is watching the entire show like a woman, right? So like, she's like, this nigga was cheating, and this nigga did it. And I'm sitting here like, nah, no way, babe. Like he, he, he made a mistake. He was cheating, but there's no way he can kill her. He was passionate. He loved her. And she's like, no, he did it. And I'm like, fam, no way. So when she's on the stand, like... Kim's entire approach to this, her entire experience is different, but I'm confused. Like, nah, the son might have did it. Like, I fell for that lie. Mm -hmm. Damn. I knew it couldn't have been the son. The son just didn't seem capable. <laughs> the son was so... Yeah. He didn't none, seem of the kids were, I mean, none of the kids he, were capable. Yeah, and, and, and of course... Um, oh, my God, The so husband... Good. To me, it was always between... It was between Nicole Kidd and uh, Grace... Grace herself. It was between Grace. It was between Jonathan and between Grace's dad. I was really, uh, my girl was really big on like Grace's dad being. Involved. I gave him a spin. I gave him a spin. Absolutely. Because why the hell was he outside the crib? He was. That yeah. was sus. And he like gave. Uh, That's why I thought Jonathan it was going money. into it. Yeah, gave Jonathan money under the table after he lost his job and didn't tell Grace. So that to me that was a little shaky. Maybe yeah, he went. I thought he was lying. Get his when he, when he together. did that. I thought he was, he was lying. lying. That scene. Where he busted out into those terrible ass crocodile tears. He's like, Who, I made uh, a mistake. Jonathan? I gave him the money. I'm so sorry oh, to his yeah, daughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm no, like, no, he was... oh, he did it. I'm like, that nigga did it. He's lying. Cause no, he that was emotional. Was... He was that emotional. was crazy. He felt, he felt bad. Yeah, but I, I the, the, the moment where I knew he did it, the absolute positive moment is when he was on the stand and they mentioned, hey, like you. After you left, you went to the cleaners and cleaned your suit. That was that. Was, and I was like, I, yeah, this nigga did it. This nigga did it. Even then, I am such an idiot, bro. Even nah, then, like, I'm like, I'm like, like he it. loved her so much. He walked back. He saw that she was bleeding. He nah. hugged her. I thought mm -hmm. the nigga hugged the dead body. And there was another part. I know last week you asked me, like, why did he go see the husband? I was like, there's a part of him that is just like, because uh, like Nicole, Grace's cat, Grace was on the stand saying he has no empathy. She spoke to his mom. He has no empathy. His sister was killed. He didn't cry. He wasn't sad. We waited for him to be sad. We waited to be there for him. But he had no empathy. I wasn't believing no when one. Bro, on, I was on his, I, I'm sad to say that. I was mm -hmm. on his side. I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. No. When he was on TV and he was crying on TV, mm -hmm. I didn't believe it. When he, um. Oh, that was, he was trash. I just didn't think Yeah, he, he was trash her. for doing that. And then when he, uh, uh, the attorney, Haley, walked in and he was like staring at her photo, staring at um, 
uh, 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 the murdered woman's photo, and he was just like staring at it. He was looking at it in a way like he was a fucking like sociopath. He tried to control no, every aspect of what was happening, and like it was he was. And the thing that turned Grace against him was when he questioned his son. Well, he questioned if his son might have done this, like the twelve year old, eleven year old boy might have done this. And I had in my mind, there was no, there was no chance he did this. Like this kid loves his dad, will defend his dad to the end. But to me, there's no chance that he bashed in this woman's head the way he was bashed in. Man, listen, I really wish that I watched that. From, I watched it from a different lens. I appreciate the lens in which I watched it from, but like hearing how you have 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 experienced it in the way I experienced it, like I am watching this. Like, yo, just prove that the man is crazy, that the man is a cheater, but he's not a murderer. Just prove that. And I don't know why that was my stance, bro. I'm so ashamed of myself. And it was even the defense because at the end of um, uh, uh, Grace's testimony, you see Haley turned to him and was like, if you just would have gotten rid of the hammer... We wouldn't, we wouldn't be here right that now. That shit was crazy. Yo, that shit so was So she crazy. knows he's guilty. Yeah, so man. So she knows that. shit that- was crazy. Shout out to you. And, and her entire defense was like, she said, I create muck. I create muck. Like, I'm not going to not gonna give you, like, concrete evidence as to why you didn't do this. I'm just going to get shit messy so that there's reasonable doubt and there's either a mistrial or you're found not guilty or there's a hung jury. So that, like, that was her entire motivation. So for me, it's like he was always a suspect. He was always like a, a, a top suspect in her murder. Wow, it was a crime man. of passion. And he loved her. Passion. And she and we saw in the scene like he she was like interfering in his life. He had meetings with his wife, met his kid. Yeah. Yo, but like he even waved at his kid. That was fucked up. Because <laughs> he's, he's he's sick. Yeah. He, he's sick in the I head. I always knew he was a shitting dude though. But that was uh, great. It was great. Great. Undoing great. And he felt if you like he couldn't. It, and he felt like we're he was so sorry that we ruined it, but you should have seen it. It's so good. Nah, fuck. It was over almost over a week ago. About a week people ago. People will people will survive. Um. All right. What we got next? What we current, got next? What we, we potted current events. Current events. Um, current events. We can breeze through this. We can breeze through the current events, and then we can get to the social topic, and then we can go to sports. Yeah. Cool. So I'll breeze through these current events. Here's what I had. I want to kick it off with the 12 days of little baby's Christmas. It started early, but he's been getting gifts for two weeks straight. And the biggest <laughs> gift of them all is the Richard Millie that he got from um, James, Harden. James Harden. So yes, little baby has been celebrating his birthday. Shout out to him. Um, and so James Harden came through and get, like they had this like they had this bromance, which I think is cool. Whatever. Fine. I think that's dope. Cross hip hop. Basketball, amazing, right? But he gave him a Prada bag full of a honey bun <laughs> with the honey buns and a Richard Millie. And like all that, like it's cool, I get it, I get the play on words, I get the play on the honey bun, Lil Baby probably raps about all that, that's cool. But what I was thinking was like, yo, like, if I'm James Harden, like man's man's, uh huh. <laughs> if I'm his man's man's man's, <laughs> we gotta and hope he that. Gave, <laughs> and he gave Lil Baby a Richard Millie. And a hundred bands. I'ma just I'ma just be like, yo, that's cool, but like I'm your man. Does man's he need mans. it? And does he need it? <laughs> does he need a rich? I mean, I think it's rich. I like think it's rich dope. people. Rich people do. I see that's not a trend. just rappers, like everybody, every rich person does it. They exchange expensive gifts with each other. Okay. Whether it's bags or 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 um cars, like you know, offset got Cardi the Bentley, the Bentley truck. The Bentley truck. <laughs> which <laughs> which in essence dissolved their divorce. Um, and they're back. And okay, they're back wait. Let me, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Then, like, you and I are rich. We're rich friends right now. Uh huh. I'm a rich bitch. You a rich bitch, right? Which, uh, what, what are you giving me for my birthday? I don't know. Maybe a watch. Nice watch. Nice watch. Yeah, not a rich and Millie. <laughs> I, think I, I, think, I, I think I just not, but a, not nice a rich, watch. Not, not a, a rich and Millie. Millie. What nah. would I give Trev? Nice watch. <sighs> I'll take a watch. I think watches are dope. I think watches are like the purest, like simplest form of um of like elegance. A gentleman's and, gift. A gentleman's gift. Okay, salute. And, you know what? And, and salute I made to the it. gentleman. Yeah. Not the little colorful like swatch watch. It's like like it's like like the colorful ones that they give each other. They're like seventy thousand dollars for a swatch watch. I don't I don't get that. <laughs> yeah. That's the kid shit. I don't, get that, one. I don't I, get that. I don't want to bust down either. What's a bust? What's that? What do you mean? Like a bust down, like all diamonds and stuff. Oh yeah, I don't want that. I don't want that. You're I'm good. So like old. I like I like I like the What's like a the bust down. 
It took. I didn't know. I honestly never knew this entire time with a bust down. Was it a bust? Yo, you a bust? be over here singing all these songs. Bust down, Tatiana. I don't sing. I don't, I don't sing that else. shit. <laughs> that shit I don't is know trash. What else. But see, you don't even know either. Yeah, I but know. I just, I never, I heard it in songs. I thought bust down was like, like I thought it was like a woman, like a a, a term for sex, like bust down. Oh, you I thought freak, that's, that's what it was. I no, I just what I thought it was. <laughs> freak man. Freak I, <laughs> And no idea. No, uh, what else we got cool. in current events? Sh- yeah, shout out to all the rich people giving out rich gifts. Um, mm-hmm. Next in current events, speaking of the rich, uh, Keisha Cole versus Ashanti. Um, mm-hmm. The battle of the women's that we've been waiting on. Have you been waiting on it? I don't know if you've been waiting on it, but I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to watch it. Ashanti got some hits. When Ashanti, like, for me, they, they both got some hits. And a lot of hits, like, when they ring off, you're just like, then in it. Then in it, like a lot of those. So yeah. it should be a good night on Saturday. Saturday at eight o'clock. Um I just yeah. think you gotta like when certain Keisha Cole songs play, you gotta look and see what your girl is vibe, what your girl's vibe is. Take a look. Just take a look. Like how's she feeling about I should have cheated? What <laughs> like how is she feeling about it? I changed my mind. How is she feeling about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which you one does she sing the longest for? You know what? Which like, I one is? Pay attention to which one of the women's songs Kim sings harder than yeah. the, the other ones. Absolutely. Because if it's Ashanti, it's like harmless. I mean, foolish. You could you sing along to foolish with Ashanti. You got to you know check yeah. to see the vibe in the room. Um, and just yeah, I, I would just advise guys. Hey, like when those Keisha Cole songs come on, look at the vibe in your room and uh, respond accordingly. Respond. Or even just do things leading up to the leading up to the that, battle no, to be on the good side. No, as gentlemen, we have to do something else. We have to just make mental notes. Like, yo, Shorty was really hitting those notes on "I Should Have Cheated," and we need to talk about this in a couple weeks. <laughs> make a note, my nigga. Like, just make a note. Make a um, note, absolutely. So, who do you got winning, or is it going to be for the fans? Everyone's a winner. Gucci and uh, Gucci and Jeezy. I, I'm gonna have to go with just off. Feel and bangers. I'm gonna have to go with the Shanti. Okay, yeah, I just Long Ashanti, Island Zone. Oh, Glen yeah, Cove Zone. Shit, like from like Baldwin. Glen Cove. Ah. Baldwinish. Ah, Westbury-ish. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Westbury is the most confused like, because Westbury is. Never mind, we're a New York podcast, but essentially <laughs> Westbury has like like a rich area, and then it has like just Westbury, and then Glen Cove. Um, the last topic I had was the federal decriminalization of weed. Um, so they passed that bill, I believe, on Friday of last week, if not mm-hmm. Friday, Thursday. Um, I have the link here. And basically, this is just big for all of those who've been arrested, wrongfully accused, um, served time, have records on their, have records in general because they had in their possession a substance of marijuana. Um, and now, like, now we can get rid of the bullshit, right? Like, now when I apply for, not me personally, but like now me, that guy who had a, some weed on me before apply for a job, I can now say, it's cool, like, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if, I know you put on here, like, I don't know if it's like, if private companies are going to stop drug testing, they won't stop. But I think what happened, like what happens in Cal, what happened in California, is that they took um, weed off of. Like it's a five point drug test for most mm-hmm. of the companies, so they just took marijuana off that. Okay, like the NBA. And Lord Jesus, please do it. Please, won't you do it? We we need it. Uh, I mean, we need it. The people need I, it. I, I take think, it off, man. We need it. I don't. First, I don't think the people need it. I think what people need are are laws and uh, <laughs> legislation <laughs> that make sure we don't go to jail for possessing weed. And I think that's dope. And I think that's great. I think that's more important than anything else. No, um, additionally, on top of that, though. No, I think that's that's number one. And then I think no, we need to go back. Done. It's already done. That's already done. Now we need more. Come on, man. Come on. And I think we need to go side. back and find everybody that's in that's been arrested or is in prison. For you know marijuana possession and let them out of prison for marijuana possession for nonviolent drug offenses like let them all out like all these laws are changing and it's benefiting people now that are outside that are free and it's also benefiting states that are going to be able to tax you for the marijuana that you purchase so like that's all that's all amazing but we got to go back and 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 right some wrongs yeah we don't and as far as like 
as far as like private companies like drug testing, that's always still going to be their prerogative because they're a private company. It is, but I'm just I'm just saying it is like that's not anything that's gonna that legislation is gonna change. It might change with the time, like it might change with the time, but it, it it's it's gonna be company by company. And California is a lot more liberal than a lot of other states, and a lot of other California is a lot more liberal country like companies than a lot of other states. So we'll see. But I think more. I, but I think the decriminalization is more important than 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 getting high. That's just me. It is. I, I I don't disagree with you. Yeah, but I but I, but I feel like there are there are people that are like listening to this and seeing this. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm going to be high all the time now, or I'm going to like, you know, I think it's just, I, I'm at my job and I can I can smoke on my way to work, and it's like it doesn't work like that. It's not, it not, it's, it's it's actually it's different, man. It's a libera- it's, a, it's a liberating feeling that things are being done in place for like people to enjoy something that like had to be done in secret. I think so. Like the fact that it's no longer decriminalized. Like that's for people who like, who are carrying high possessions and, and gotten caught. That doesn't apply to the everyday recreational user. So like, mm-hmm. in, so like, not everyone is walking around with ounces and pounds, right? But what it teaches, what what it, what it does for people who recreationally use marijuana is like, yo, like, I, there's a change. There's a change in the climate happening. The people who sell it won't be persecuted. The pe- like the people we get it from won't go missing anymore. The, our communities, our people who make a living off of this, won't be persecuted socially we won't be viewed i mean we're still gonna be viewed however we're fucking viewed but socially like you can't view us as a criminal because it's not a criminal act and i think for like on a like when it comes to like yes this bill being passed for decriminalization that doesn't really affect me directly because i'm not a criminal and i don't do things with marijuana for criminal uses but what it does for me is shows me that there's a climate change overall. yes you know no it's I mean? there and, is and, it's, and it's, that's, it's and that's and that's exciting it's coming like the stigma of it being, you know, like a like a drug that like poor people or black people or whoever use and then criminalizing it just to make us all look like poor and disenfranchised and unintelligent people. The decriminalization of it helps all of that. And I'm and I'm all for that. That is my biggest, I guess, uh I feel like the biggest win when it comes to, you know, decriminalizing marijuana and basically decriminalizing all street drugs. Honestly, Facts. because yeah, street see, drugs are poor or like, you know, targeted to poor people and put poor people in jail. And they, they love putting poor black people in jail in this country. Uh, to your point, exactly on that note, I'm looking at the article here um, from CBS News and it says that 3.6 um, times African-Americans are 3.6 times more likely than white Americans to be arrested for marijuana. So like to that point. Like, just in possession, right? Like, just in possession, like, on my way to work, possession, like, it's no longer going to be walking in fear, right? Like, and I think that's, like, because as an African-American walking to work or in my car or wherever, if that smell is on me, it's automatically targeted to, like, well, this guy must be, and I'm going to be treated like a criminal. But now, because of this decriminalization, like, for the regular person, like, you can smell like weed if you want to smell like weed, and, like, no one can really accuse you of being, you know what I mean? They could, they could, I lied, they could, they will. Be safe out there in those streets. But Absolutely. listen, man, the climate's definitely changing, so shout out to that. Um, I'm just gonna geez. advise people not to go to work smelling like weed. I mean, yeah, that, 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 that. Don't go to work smelling like weed or with liquor Come on, on your breath. man, be classy, don't, don't go anywhere smelling like weed. Do your thing, but like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, do you wanna hit the social uh, topic or do you wanna save that for closer to Christmas time? We can go to sports. We can go to sports. Yeah. Ladies, next week, though, we're going to give you guys gems on how to shop for men, okay? Because I feel like there's a gap um, sometimes. Abs- there damn sure is. <laughs> okay, cool. We can just, you want to hit it real quick? Let's do it. No, I want to I want to actually, like, get into it, get into okay, it. Okay, so you want to get into it. Week. Okay, cool. Yeah. So let's, uh, and I also, am, I just want to go on record right now in the spirit of gifts. There's, n- I've, I've, there's no gap between me and my lady on gifts because she's staring at me. Because she's standing <laughs> over your shoulder. <laughs> she's, she's in the room. But that wasn't really, di- that wasn't directed towards her. That was just to walk, directed towards women in general. I'm good on this side. Okay, very good. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to die after this podcast. Um, in sports, what do we have? John Wall to the Rockets, Russell Westbrook to the Wizards. Do you like it? Do you love it? It is what same it is. Same thing? It's the it's, same it's, thing? It's, it is what it is. Like, you trade no. 
one guy for niggas, another guy. They're quick. both fast. They jump high. Yo, John Wall's on this team. John Wall's a little bit more of a pure passer, pure point guard type than, yes. than Russ is. Um, yes. Russ is a better defender. John Wall's it, coming off an injury. Those are the, really the only differences, right? And James Harden still doesn't want to play in Houston, even though he was. I, I, I was telling you this before we started recording. Like he was in the club. I saw on uh, Sports Center. He was in the club last night with Lil Baby because you know they got the bromance shit Besties. popping off, holding hands, honey buns. They're honey, honey buns. buns. <laughs> he gave him honey buns. <laughs> and um, so James Harden wasn't at the group practice because of COVID concerns, and then he wasn't at his individual practice either because of COVID concerns. But he wasn't at his individual practice in the morning, and he was at the club overnight. So. Kind of see how James Harden's going to play this whole I don't want to be here thing. <laughs> and that sucks, not right? not going to go well. Because John Wall is coming in with the energy of like, yo, let's make this shit work. And no, John Wall is coming like, in trying to survive in this league so people can see what he can still do. I don't yeah. think John Wall's focus is to let's make this thing work. It's, I need to show people that no, I can still I play mean, basketball. And in that, yeah, he wants to show people basketball. But in that, it's like in order for that to, to, to be showcased, this shit has to work. And and, and and James Harden has to buy in. And it's, it's just unfortunate that James Harden, is his mind is in Brooklyn. His his heart is with his other honey bun, KD. You know what I'm saying? Oh, his like, heart is not in Brooklyn. It's in whatever Houston club he was in, Atlanta club he was in last night. And <laughs> whoever was with where, him. That's where his pure heart is. Whoever was in VIP with him. That's where his heart is. Yeah, facts. Apparently he's a sniper. Um, but yeah, I think, I, I do overall think that the winner is uh, on this trade. I do think that um, the Rockets actually benefit the most from this. Really? Um, because, yeah, I do. And my, my take on that is that John Wall is used to playing with a scoring guard um, who, 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 who's ball dominant and who is, um, he knows how to just take a back seat and play his role better. Russ has to lead the team. I saw, I saw an article today that said Russ, which, listen, there's nothing wrong with any of these things, right? But what I'm saying is, I think this is why Houston wins it. Like, there was an article that said, John, uh, Russell Westbrook went to practice today two hours to set the tone of intensity, right? Yeah. Russell's a leader. Um, so he's going to have to go in there. So I think, like, it's going to be him and Bradley Beal figuring out how two head honchos work. But, like, John Wall knows that the top dog is James Harden. So all he has to do is make that shit work. You feel me? So I think... Going into this from a point guard perspective, I think John Wall is the winner in this situation with the Rockets overall. My take. Um, I don't think I think it's a wash. I don't think either of them really win. I know that's like a cop out, but I can do that because who has a know. better who has a better record next season? Mm -hmm. The Wizards. Put money on it. I will. All I'll, right, I'll cool. not money. We'll, 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 not money, but like let's let's bet. Let's bet. Um, a nice a nice gentleman's bet. Um. Maybe some steak. We'll put some steak. That works for me. Because I don't think James Harden's going to play a game for the Rockets this year. See, and that... <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let's put an asterisk to the bet. Let's put an asterisk just, to the Just bet. based on his activity right now, I don't think he's playing a game. I think okay. he'll be traded before the season starts. Okay, bets, bets on if James Harden's a Rocket when season starts. Nah, man, it can't be that. It has to... That, it, the bet has to be what Come the bet on, is. Come on, man. The Rockets he are be James traded, Harden. You want me to ask if, you... Because if he gets traded, I mean, listen, if James Harden's with the Rockets this year, they win 50 games, they lose in the second round. That's that's like, that's easy Cause it's a Lakers to figure thing. out. It's a Lakers Exactly. Thing. They either lose to the Lakers or they lose to Denver or whatever better team than them in the West. They finish either fourth or fifth in the West like they did every, like they do every other year with James Harden, and they just lose in the second round of the playoffs. Yeah, it matters not. It matters not, I guess. It doesn't mean Watch. anything. But You're if right. James Harden's not there, they don't make the playoffs. If it's just John Wall and Demarcus Cousins dragging his ass like up and down the court, two Achilles, two Achilles, with two Achilles fucked up, and and Eric Gordon with his injury history, nah, they ain't doing shit. We're gonna see, man. We're gonna see. Indeed. Um, Jello makes it to the Pistons on a un oh. um, guaranteed contract. Oh. Um, I don't like that answer, Trevor. I don't like that. Why don't? Why are you? Why are you? Uh, why are you doing that? Because he's not a good enough to be an NBA player. He's not. But who does that affect? Does that affect you? I mean, I have, I, I got a platform. I got to have an opinion, right? No, you can have an Shit. opinion, but, I, but like, here's what, like another. <laughs> <laughs> no, because what I'm saying, I was, I was getting to, my questions were getting to a point. Uh -huh. And it's just like, yo, like, I get it. He might be trash, but I think, like, what I, like, because this is where my stance is now. I am just dropping the fact that, that Jello and Lonzo and all these, like, they're whatever. They made it to the NBA. It's miraculous. 
That is that's that amazing. Is, like, you know what I'm saying? I think that's a great accomplishment. And yeah. they're black. And I'm, I mean, I'm you know what I mean? Like, and I think half. Eh, I'm, I shouldn't do that. I should not Don't do, do that. that. You're gonna they have half nephews. Men. What's they up, man? Not, they should not do that. Okay. All right, cool. All right. But Whew. listen, okay. I wasn't even referring to them being like half and half. They just really, really bright. <laughs> that's it. That's all I was referring to. <laughs> <laughs> the niggas is see through. <laughs> yeah, they are anyway, translucent. Indeed. Um, All right, back to, back to being sure. I, listen, I think NPC. um everyone <laughs> everyone <laughs> else has given them a heart. Like I think everyone else has said so much negative things to say. And like you said, we do have a platform. And I do want to say from a perspective as an African American dude to get three of your African American sons, however they may look, into the NBA, salute. It's an accomplishment. It's mm-hmm. great. Um, however you got it, that, like, would I have done it differently? A thousand percent. Would my kids mm-hmm. speak differently? Yeah. And would my kids look different? Yeah. But like, to 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 to, to train, to invest, to put money into, to bet on yourself and the things that you produce, and to have to see live results, I think that's fucking phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Salute to Levar. And that's what I got. So I think two things can be true. I think multiple things can be true at the same time. I think it's miraculous that Levar Ball had the foresight to you know, train and rear and counsel his kids the way he did for them to be where they are right now. So, like you said, sometimes the ends don't justify the means. And I don't feel like in a lot of times and a lot of actions that LeVar took that the ends justified the means. That's just me. I think he's I, 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 I think he's a stand-up guy. I think he's a great dad. Um, the whole, like, big, uh, big baller brand company uh, fiasco where he lost a bunch of his sons, his oldest son's money, he didn't do it. His, his, his business no. partner did it. What are you talking that, about? That's life. That's but Lavar didn't do that. I, I understand. Life. I understand. I understand. That's life. But that's what Lavar was pushing. Like that was it was Lavar on ESPN. It was Lavar on Fox. It was Lavar on TV every single week when he was hot. You know what I'm saying? And like and, and and you have this other person that's running your son's business and running it into the ground. And then you I can't I like and I see everything. and then that no I mean you can't, but you should. At least try to, or do a better yeah. job of trying to. And I feel like he could have done a better job of trying to if he wasn't trying to be famous himself. So, 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 I, so I, so I just Clout. that's so why I feel like the Listen, the ends don't go. justify the means all the time. Listen, like two things can be true. He's a great dad. From all accounts, he's a great present. dad. Therefore, his kids very present, very active. But he's also a little bit of a jerk. Yeah. Not the nigga I'd probably want to be friends with. That's just me. I'm, no, I'm with you on that. Like, you won't yeah. catch me. You won't catch like you won't catch me hanging out with Lavar, right? But like, I do want to credit just the results. Yeah, you can absolutely. You know what I mean? I mean, but you got to really talk to Alonzo and Jello and um, and Lamelo about whether they feel like the ends justify the means because the uh, they, Jones... they're on record and they, and, they, and they're on record like Alonzo's on record saying he supports. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a... a... like any other kid. Like they said the things that any other kid would say. I think it's my I pops think be wilding sometimes, but I fuck with my pops, and that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, yeah. just I've, like being a kid. I mean, that's everybody. Yeah. Um, I think like the thing that has You're made so it look wild. better is that like Lonzo's coming into his own. Like he's he's talking more, and when he talks more, For you himself. hear more of his voice yeah. and his opinion and his his viewpoints, and and then he's also you know got his own like apparel deal, and he's taking care of his own money. Instead of like you know relying on other people, so I think from that standpoint, he took it as a lesson, a lesson learned, and he was like, "I'm gonna handle my shit now," and I think that's cool. But I think it's I, have you heard like some of the quotes, like some of the stuff like his dad has said about like you need to be with this company, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you should be with us. Why would like that type of stuff? I'm not, I'm not with. And like, and they know their dad, uh, no, yeah, and they probably he's, just he's brush it lot. off. He's a lot by by like by, listen, he's a lot. Yeah. Like when he was on his like little like capade, right? Like I was also on, on the other side, run. like yo, he's doing too much. He was I'm doing way too much. too much. But when I saw that his results, like listen, man, because of like in the spirit of the alchemist, right? Like chase your shit. He had a dream. Yeah, chase it. But he he had a dream for his uh three sons. For his sons. And I love I love the irrational confidence. I love the the backing up your sons hundred percent, but it became a lot about him. It it wasn't of really course. much about his sons. It became a lot about him, and that's what was kind of nasty to me. It's no, cool. Go you. get yours. Go do your thing, but don't 
Don't make it seem like it's about your sons when it's about you. Just tell me it's about you. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, yeah, about you playing football. And you, like, yes. And that's like, you always have to just, like, a grain of salt. For me, it's always a grain of salt. And my grain of salt right now is just three sons in the league. Nothing else. Not that's business dope. sense, not nothing. But um, it happens. I mean, because you got the Holiday Brothers also. And it happens. And it does happen. Um, And we don't know. And, and we I don't even, their parents we are don't even know who their, their dad is. Right, 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 right. Yeah, their right. parents are more low-key. And then what, there's another set of brothers. Um... Uh, Giannis and his brothers, the Antetokounmpo's. Right, right, right. You know what? Yeah. Like, very you know low so key funny, parents. Man? Yeah, you see that. Like, and there's just, like, listen, but that's just like different ways to get it. You know what I mean? And like, like, which way would like, you prefer? Under the radar, just keep it low. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I could resonate with a, I don't know the the, the Drew Holiday stories, but I know the Giannis story. Like right now, that's that's a story for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. that's a story that I could relate to. Like yo, like not less. Like go get it. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, we had to go get it. Like, they didn't have... Like, Giannis and his brothers had nothing. They, they didn't have from, shit. They came from Africa. Then they went to Greece. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like... And he was a little... He was scrawny. You feel me? And his story's better because it's like, yo, not only am I going to make it, but I'm going to make sure that I make it in a way to put my brothers on because right now, his, there was no clout created behind his brothers. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, yeah. I, I like that story better for me. And that was a good, that's a good question. I and his like brother's a, and his brother's a champion. And his brother's <laughs> a champ. <laughs> For the Lakers, crazy, crazy, bro. That was that was good, Trev. Yeah. Um, my last thing is um, Nate Robinson's big bro is is, is stepping in. <laughs> big bro stepping in. Okay. You're gonna Floyd pick is on, coming to handle his work. Yeah, his light work. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go get your big brother and tell him I want to fight him. This is some real street shit, bro. <laughs> this is some. <laughs> What we're talking about is Floyd and Logan Paul are set to fight uh, on February 20th. Another thriller spectacular, another Uncle Snoop phenomenon, but more so, what do you think? This is not, oh man. Is this what I, we I want? Mean, is this the revenge we want? All right, I'm going to give you two sides. I'm going to give you the fun side and the serious side. All right, fun, fun side, would love to see this. Fun side, would love to see Floyd maybe get knocked the fuck out. What the fuck? What, ha what happens when that happens? Oh, the world implodes. What happens? When I thought about that. I would Yo. love to see that. The world implodes. Oh, my God. The moon crashes into the sun. Oh. And it delegitimizes. And I feel like, so this is the serious You're side. You're not him no more, dog. I feel You're like not this, him. My serious side. I feel like all these little amateur matches that are being billed and making so much money and revenue is delegitimizing real fights. Because there was a real fight this Sunday. Right, and there was less between Danny there. Garcia and Errol Spence. Right, you watched it. I didn't watch it, but I watched the highlights. I didn't watch either. I watched the highlights. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like interested said, in it. But but look at me. I was begging for the Nate fight. <laughs> begging for the Nate. And I was more interested in the real fight that happened this yeah. weekend. And yeah. it's it's it legit delegitimizes real fighting yeah. because it's like we're not because for people who are casual boxing fans. Because I consider myself like a little bit above above casual boxing fan, not like okay. a diehard, but not casual. For that casual not boxing casual. fan that likes to see fights, but also likes some salacious entertainment shit, this is a wow. This is a win. Like you get to see your favorite social media YouTube person fight on TV with Snoop Dogg commentating and concerts. It's diluting the boxing. It's not boxing. It's just it's yeah, like it's, an, just, it's a party. It's, it's an event. It's an entertainment, entertainment event. You know. Yeah. Um, I just man, I don't get. I don't get it, man. Because it's not a money grab for Floyd. It is right? money. He needs money. All right, cool. He spends a lot of money. I'm not saying he's broke. I'm not saying he'll ever yeah. be broke. But he spends a lot of money. He's paid off a lot of women that he beat up. It's true. <laughs> he has a lot of kids. He's about to be a grandpa. Oh, he did a great job raising his daughter. His daughter is about to be like a seventh baby mom of of this rapper nigga that she, that's pre, that she's pregnant by right now. Any El Chapa? Yeah, no. Nah, is it him? I don't know these don't names, know it's, man. It's, an, it's another. Why one, they got? Why they names letters? N E L. Uh, y M B. Oh, N B A is he, uh, no. N B A never, never broke again. That's never not even the National again. Basketball <laughs> Association. You fuck. Like, what are you doing? No, and ah oh, man, yeah, she's gonna be a seventh baby mama to some to some dude. Great job, Floyd. NBA. I can't. Yeah, NBA young boy, or is it NBA uh, young? Is it one of the one of the NBAs? 
Yeah. Yeah, I I I, I just think it delegitimizes boxing. I'm watching though. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm I will. Too cool. We'll see. Listen, it's more, <laughs> I'm it's too cool. You are. You are. You are. Because you also did say that you're not the casual boxer. You know what I'm saying? So there's no way you're watching this. But um, if Floyd loses, Floyd man, that's going to be. Imb- and, here's, and here's how Floyd loses. Here to here first. Like, you saw how his brother was swinging. One of those swings, you can't really defend that swing. What is that? Oh, wait, this is Logan Paul fighting or Jake Paul. It's not Paul. Jake. It's not Jake. It's Logan, his big bro. His big bro was oh, his big bro. Oh, I thought it was Jake because I was thinking. Nah, no turnaround. way, bro. Floyd would kill Jake. He's fighting his brother who is the actual professional boxer. It's just legit. legit. And I think it kind of, I mean, nobody, the thing is like we're in a time right now where nobody like actually cares about like your skill or your profession or the honor that you put behind it. So nobody cares that Floyd is just out here like grabbing money. He's basic he's basically like like the bearded lady at a circus. Niggas is getting it. Niggas is getting it. And like I get it. I get, I get what like, you, you got it. You know what I mean? Like niggas is getting it. I think that's what it is. I don't know. I don't like it. That's just me though. And nobody cares what I think. So it's fine. I, I mean <laughs> I, I don't really like it either, but you know. I guess oh, it's, I hope Floyd doesn't lose, but like when you, like it's one of those things. Like I hope he win, loses. When you win, like what does it matter? Exactly. But the thing is, is like if Floyd loses, the world implodes. If he wins, he was supposed to win. So what's so what's the common denominator in why he does this? The bag. Well, yeah, you're right. You heard it here first on the Kingsley's podcast. Yes. And I and I do think Floyd is going to knock out this nigga. So it is what it is. He's just too good. At, he's really he's he sucks at being a person, but he's really good at boxing. He's gonna clean him up. Yeah, it's gonna Shout be bad. Shout out to Nate. I would have sent that text too, though. Yo, can you beat up his big brother for me, please? <laughs> That's crazy. You got I'm anything else? I'm the big else? brother, though. That's all I got, man. Indeed, I'm good. I'm tired. Dog, Ooh. I gotta do a workout after this. Um, come on, outside. Hey. Yeah, I'm not working out outside. <laughs> those are my jumping jacks. You gotta work on those. Yo, how's right, your y'all. seven day? Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh how'd it go? Up. How's your seven day, two days a week, no liquor? Lie, because you had liquor on sat on Sunday. So Sunday. talk to me more about this. <laughs> it went well. I feel you see leaner. I'm catching niggas caught up. I'm, catching I'm a lot. I'm a lot leaner, honestly, because I didn't have any ice cream. I didn't have any like um, oh, cake or snacks or cookies or anything like that. So it was good. I felt. I feel leaner. It's something I feel like I'm gonna continue, just like with my reduced. My reduced frequency of snacking. Nice. Um, so yeah, it was good. I like it. Good. Just wanted Indeed. to, you know, friends hold friends accountable. Respect. Appreciate that. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. For uh for Josh, it's Trev at the socials, King Speech Five. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, guys. All the hot shit. All the fire flames. Indeed. Peace out, guys. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>